More or less out of curiosity, we threw in the big brother of the 16, a Hypergona 35. Basically, the same projector lens made by Chrétien, but designed for 35mm instead of 16mm projectors. Is there any benefit that could outweigh putting up with the practical disadvantages? First of all, the much larger size doesn't allow the use of a front metal jacket or hardcore DNA. So, practical considerations have to be taken in account. The 35 weights a hefty 1.57 kg and the total length of 18 cm in addition to the length of the taking lens will offset that weight, making it very cumbersome even when used as a dual focus setup. The large rear element of the 35 allows for faster apertures in a larger front element in the taking lens. We tried up to f1.2, not that it's a good idea. That doesn't mean that the 35 offers a wider field of view. With 6 to 5 and a 24mm sensor height, we were able to pair it with lenses as wide as about 90mm. For a better comparison to the Hypergona 16, we paired the 35 with the same Canon FD 85mm f1.2 as spherical as the taking lens, but we cropped in by 20% to compensate for the narrow field of view. As we don't have a single focus solution, we can pull the focus. Focus is locked on the night in the starting position. The Hypergona 35 looks very similar to the 16. It produces the same expressive golden flares and some ghosting of the light sources. Surprisingly, the much larger rare element doesn't improve vignetting. To 100% magnification shows that the image is actually softer than the 16. Cropping to a 16 by 9 aspect looks somewhat acceptable. Wrecking focus is next to impossible with dual focus, and this shows how important a solid setup is. Without something like a front metal jacket, you will always introduce wiggle. That is just way too obvious. This example also shows what happens if you focus your taking lens and anamorphic block the wrong way. Your bokeh shows a horizontal stretch. With this weak setup, even changing the aperture causes visible wiggle. Just like with the 16, the Hypergona 35 looks just much better in the dark setup. We can see that it gets a quite sharp image at f4. And it shows way less distortions compared to the 16. The overall look and especially the flares are beautiful. At f4 the image is quite crisp and even at 200% magnification it seems to be usable in this context. The large entrance pupil allows to open the taking lens wide, but as you can see, the image quality drops drastically. This will also introduce circle flares, like we have seen them in our episode about ultra-fast lenses. Interesting. The weight and size, as well as the lack of a single focus solution that neither breaks your arm nor the bank, makes the Hypergona 35 very unpractical, which is probably why it is by far the cheapest option in our test. At the time of release, the Hypergona was traded around $250, making it a nice toy for first steps in DIY anamorphic. We will put a link in the description.